It is undoubtedly known that frogs are probably one of the cutest animals on the planet, everybody. They seriously are. I mean, who could not think a frog, like, is adorable? When most people think about frogs, they ever, ever, a lot of people think about Kermit, you know? Kermit the Frog, everyone. But really, in real life, though, frogs are just as cute as they are in cartoons. So I figure, why not go ahead and share it with you guys probably the few cutest pet frogs that make great pets. So first species on the list, everyone, Pac-Man frogs. Pac-Man frogs have become probably one of the most popular frog species in on the pet trade, everyone. And obviously the reason it's because they become so popular is because of how cute looking they are. They don't get big at all, and really, they're super easy to care for. They're very docile. They don't have a huge appetite, even though they might actually have the taste for eating anything they can get fit in their mouth. But regardless, though, they're not aggressive, though. And the best thing about these guys is they don't need a humongous enclosure. Probably the minimum size is a 10 gallon, but a 20 gallon is probably the perfect size if you actually are just keeping one. But if you have a pair, probably 40 gallons gonna do it. So, and the thing is about these guys is they are native to South America. So where they're from, obviously South America, a majority of that area is tropical and they do need a high humidity enclosure, you guys, at least 60 to 80%. Uh, range right there and definitely daytime hem high temperatures somewhere in the 80s a hundred percent for sure and They definitely need a place to hide for sure whether it's like well actually you know what Maybe they don't need a, a hide you guys because these guys are known to bury themselves in the ground So I guess it's really not too much of a big deal But it's always important though that to keep the enclosure quite humidified because like I said temp the humidity range 60 to 80 percent so if you do live in a dry area like where I'm from it's always a good idea to mist their enclosure daily to make sure they can absorb all that moisture in them I think they're absolutely a cute frog everybody and definitely the nice thing about them is they're not expensive they're pretty cheap and affordable to care for really their main diet is from when they're babies it doesn't hurt to give them like small like mealworms but when they get larger though typically around like five six inches in size you definitely want to upgrade towards like rodents like small mice and stuff because that's typically what they're going to eat in the wild once they reach full growing size and as for their life capacity it's actually pretty surprising when you think about it compared to wild frogs around here typically their lifespan the average is around like six to seven years but there are some cases though some of them can live up to about 10 years so that's a pretty long time for a small frog species but yeah that's still uh i think it's a pretty cool pet though regardless and like i said they're very docile and very easy to care and pretty well i wouldn't say super duper easy but definitely easy enough for beginners to actually um do a lot of homework on next up white tree frogs these type of frogs you guys originate i believe if i'm correct are they from australia i believe i'm not sure you guys <laughs> but correct me if i'm wrong but the one thing about white tree frogs is everyone is that are a tropical species as well that require a humidity range roughly about 60 70 percent and of course these guys unlike some frog species these guys are nocturnal meaning they are out during the nighttime hours the reason for that is because it's probably because it's going to be a little bit cooler out and it's going to be more humid than during the day that being said though these guys make really good pets. They can be a little bit tricky for beginners, but these guys are very docile and you can handle them. But there is a catch though. If you do plan on handling your pet white's tree frog, you, it's a good idea to actually soak your hands in water, like non-chlorinated by the way, but also avoid soap. Avoid adding soap while washing your hands because the oil in our skins, if, if we don't wash our hands before we handle these frogs, the oils in our skin and salt can actually be, can damage actually the frog's texture as, on them as well. And if we actually wash our hands and added soap on it, if some of that soap scent is still on our hands as we're handling the frogs, it could be really toxic to them. So that's kind of something serious you guys gotta think about before handling your pet frog there. But that being said though, the minimum size terrarium, I think, for your pet white's tree frog is probably something like this kind of cage here, my girl Ariel's tank. They roughly say 10 to 20 gallon vertical terrarium, but this is probably perfect if you have like two or three of them in an in enclosure like this. This is probably just perfect for them. And of course, the substrate some people do recommend is like cocoa fiber, since these guys are gonna be somewhat in a sub, in sort of a tropical climate. But these guys are obviously very easy to care for. And 
for, they, they don't get quite that big and these guys are insectivores anyway you can feed them like live crickets you can feed them small like mealworms or from what i read online to earthworms but that being said though you want to be careful to make sure the worms are not too large so obviously these white free tree frogs are not like pac-man frogs and well as for temperature it so it's about slightly down on the cooler side daytime high temperature probably ranges from like mid 70s to mid 80s and at nighttime it's probably about from upper 60s to lower 70s it's just a really cool species to own and some people get curious too like why they call them white street frogs but a majority of their body's green and they do have a, their undersides is pure white to tell you the truth i don't know why they call them white street frogs but i believe it's let me know in the comments below you guys i don't know much about owning frogs if you guys do have the right answer, let me know in the comments down below. White street frogs, you guys, if you do plan on getting one, make sure you guys have the right equipment. Obviously, it's a good idea to have a lot of branches for them to climb, kind of like Ariel's tank here. Always have them something to climb because these guys are an arboreal species too. So they're not going to be on the ground that often as well. And also add a lot of green plants in there, allow them to blend into their surroundings because obviously they are gonna not like being exposed that much. White street frogs I think are definitely a cute species and they're also quite popular to own too and as for the price range, they're probably a little bit more pricey but not too expensive. So they're not really that difficult to care for but if you're just getting into frogs, I don't know if it's a good idea honestly just to get a white street frog right off the bat. And our third and final species, everybody, is tomato frogs. Well, obviously when it comes to the name tomato frog, you guys might be thinking, well, is it the color of a tomato? Technically, yes it is. It has the unique coloration of and like the body structure similar to a tomato frog of a tomato, but they don't really taste like them. But the thing is about tomato frogs, everyone, is that they are a terrestrial amphibian, kind of like Pac-Man frogs. And these guys most of the time stay on the ground. And one thing that is interesting about tomato frogs, everyone, is that these guys are actually kind of a nocturnal species and and that's because they're ambush hunters kind of similar to white street frogs that are nocturnal but they're not ambush hunters when it comes to housing a tomato frog everyone the minimum size terrarium is recommended is a 10 gallon tank minimum but if you want to go up to a 20 i don't think it's anything big of an issue now that being pushed aside when it comes to lighting everyone it's always a good idea to make sure that the light bulb doesn't provide too much heat because these guys kind of do prefer temperature range between upper 60s and lower 80s because really these guys are found in a tropical region parts of madagascar unfortunately this this species has become uh, protected in, in their native habitat due to a fungus disease that has threatened their species down in their native habitat in the rainforest so with captive breeding been going on for a long time here they become a pretty pretty popular pet frog to have and these guys the recommended bedding for them like i said since these guys are in a rainforest it's always good to it's highly recommended to use some type of cocoa fiber bedding you guys whether it's like eco earth or even kind of like um reptile prime that i use from some of my snakes here everybody so it's always a good idea and it's also a good idea too to make sure you mist their enclosures daily humidity range is usually around 70 80 percent so it's always cool, a good idea to mist their enclosure daily and the unique thing about these guys is they don't require a whole lot of water so if you guys mist their enclosure like daily they can actually just drink that water off what you sprayed it onto them with and sometimes you guys do it's always a good idea it's a good idea to make sure you add a lot of bedding in here because they actually kind of like to bury themselves in the ground during the day so they can hide so obviously add some maybe like some like some leaves in here for them to hide under as well as cover it's always a good idea to provide that for any of your pet reptiles or amphibians make sure they got cover kind of like the other two species um, tomato frogs are insectivores and these guys will eat flies, mosquitoes, beetles, bug larvae, and worms as well. But if you guys can get them to adult size, which I believe is like five, six inches at adult size, you can feed them up to pinky mice as well. And that's something I never realized about them. I thought they were just bug eaters, but it doesn't hurt to give it a try once they reach full size. When it comes to old enough to start breeding, they typically it's between four, two and to four years at sexual maturity to be old enough to start reproducing. Now, with one thing that's neat about these tomato frogs, they actually will lay their eggs in water, shallow water, I should say, and the tadpoles will usually hatch within about 36 hours after being laid. Everyone that I have never seen it in person, but I've seen a lot of breeders breeding frogs online successfully doing this and stuff like that. So maybe one day, maybe I'll get my own pet frog, you guys. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll see what the future holds. So let me know which one you guys like. You guys kind of like the Pac-Man 
Pac-Man Frog, Tomato Frog, or White Street Frog. Feel free to suggest your guys' opinions down in the comments down below. And with that said, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because I got another busy weekend coming up here. I'm going to pick up my girlfriend tomorrow because we are actually going to be celebrating my mom and her new husband's like wedding that actually just recently took place. So I'm so happy for my mom that she got married because her and her boyfriend, well, husband, I should be saying now, they've been together dating for like six, seven years now, something like that. And they just recently got married not too long ago. So we're going to do the celebration this weekend. So I'm going to be vlogging that, you guys. So hopefully you guys are in, interested in actually seeing what our family's going to be doing here this coming weekend. And like I said, I'm bringing my girlfriend along. So hopefully you guys are cool with that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. But before I go, make sure you guys smash that like button if you guys want to do that too. And also subscribe if you haven't done that, everybody. I'll catch you all in the next one.